Today we're talking about disc brake rub and how to fix it. I bought some tools from Instagram. Let me show you guys. As my job in the bike shop is to go ahead and adjust disc brakes all day. And this takes up a lot of time. Usually that's one of the times it takes up the most part of the bikes is that this noise right here, that can mean a lot of things. But apparently this tool that I saw on Instagram by Cycling Pal is supposed to fix it. I bought this with my own money. As, as many of you, I scroll on Instagram a lot. And I saw this and I said they can fix disc brake alignments in a snap. So for someone who works in the industry, I'm gonna test this out today. I'm gonna let you guys know if it works or if it doesn't, or it's just a bunch of hoo-ha. So give me one second and we'll go over the whole issue. All right, so before I go into trying on this product, there's a couple of things we gotta do to test this out beforehand. And also I don't wanna set this product up for failure. So there are some tools ahead of time. Sometimes there could be paint left on here from the factory for the disc brake calipers, for the fork. Uh, maybe that if the, it, this wasn't done right. They do have um, disc brake resurfacing tools for these parts right here on the bike for the front fork and also for the rear stays in the back, just in case a bike came from factory where it wasn't done right and it caused the caliper to be twisted from there. So in this case, this might not be the best uh, solution for it. Also, from ro uh, rotors from time to time can come from the factory uh, warped or bent um, beyond repair. You can use a disc brake uh, straightening tool, which looks like this, like this right here. So if there was, if the disc brake was perfectly straight, but at one point it had like maybe a kink in it, you can go ahead and sit there and, and kind of adjust it. But be very careful if you ever attempt this by yourself. These are very brittle and they will bend more than what you think you're doing. And then you can cause even worse than what it is. So, so yeah, so we wanna make sure that the, the rotor is straight and that it's not the actual facing of the fork and doesn't even resurface. But I've already done my due diligence. This is a brand new bike, but it is just rubbing. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use this tool to align the disc brakes. Okay, so my first thing that I will do is take a four millimeter tool and go ahead and adjust these disc brakes. If it's brand new out of the box, what I'm gonna do is they're gonna come a little bit loose. As so like this, I have the benefit of the bike being in the stand. We're gonna take it like so. We're gonna spin the wheel. Then we're gonna give the front brake a squeeze. Then we're gonna tighten it up. And this should sometimes center it. Majority of times it does, to be honest with you, unless there's a, a bigger problem in here. But we go ahead and do this. But as you guys can still hear, it still makes a rubbing noise. Something's still here rubbing. So what I would do next is I would sit here and manually adjust it by loosening up a top or a bottom bolt ever so slightly use my fingers or my thumb to kind of push into place and I'll look over it by seeing it visually which way it needs to go. But with this tool that I saw on Instagram that's always on my feed by Cycling Pal, it's called Disc Brake Lemon Tool and it popped up so many times, I'm like, okay, let me try this thing out and see what happens. We're gonna try this out and see what goes. So I figured for $20, it can, if it can save me the headache of going back and forth to fix a disc brake tool, Let's go ahead and do it. So the way this will work is, we go ahead and loosen the uh, bolts that lock on the caliper to the fork. We center this onto the rotor like so, and then we kind of shimmy in between the pads. And then once it's in there, then we set it. So let me go ahead and get a tool to loosen this up real quick. So we're gonna loosen like here. We're gonna loosen here. In some instances, you might have to drop the wheel out and push a wedge in between the pads to get more space in there. But let's see first if I can kind of just do this myself. It's gonna take a little bit of maneuvering, but yeah, it's like so. Like so, I put it on there, keep on going up into it. And now the tool itself is lined up with the top part of the brake caliper. So the flat part of the tool is literally underneath this part here. So we're going to squeeze the brake Boom, we're going to tighten it down with our four millimeter Allen key. Boom, and boom. Give a nice good tighten there. And now we're going to remove the cycling pallet tool. I'm just gonna grab it like so. Now let's see what happens. So it's better, but it still sounds 
Still sounds like it's rubbing in certain spots. I'm going to go ahead and pump it a couple times. No. All right, I'm going to try it one other way and we're going to see what happens the right way. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give it one more fair try without dropping the wheel first. Let me try this one more time. Because it was actually, I was looking at it, it was actually pretty dang close to being completely done. So I'm going to feed it back on there, like so. We're going to shimmy this in there. I know I don't got the best angles for this, but I got to do what I got to do. Get it in there. Go there. It's installed. Let's squeeze the brake. Give her a nice little squeeze. And mind you, while I'm tightening it down, I'm holding the disc brake to engage so that way it kind of centers itself. Let go. Remove the cycling pal tool. Pull out. Oh, it's so close. I feel like if I just... Okay, it's pretty close. Watch. If I just take this and move it over just a little bit, my hand, that should fix right there. It's literally, that's how close it was. I just gave it one little, one little move over there. But I'm gonna go ahead, it's like it. That's me pumping. That, that's, this, so this is actually getting it pretty close to the point where I can just put this in there, line it, and then I can work from there. But does it actually fix it? Not in this bike, but I used it on a previous bike before I did the video, and it worked pretty dang good. So I'm gonna try it one more time. All right, so because I already fixed that one, I want to grab a brand new bike and just try it off that without doing anything. So this is a 52 Roubaix that I grabbed off there with the same component on the front, Tiagra, and the same brake and everything to kind of give a same similar test. But this one is right off the rack. You can hear it's making a noise. So we're going to test it right away just to see what happens. Now let's go ahead and get it down. But yes, I'm not gonna lie to you. When I use this tool in there, and I set up how it was supposed to be kind of set up, it got it to a point where literally anyone can make a small adjustment. Now, is it doing what it's claiming right off the bat? Not on these ones, but let's see with this model right here. I mean, getting it pretty close is better than how it was. Okay, so we're over there. It's in place. Give it a nice squeeze. Tighten down the top bolt, tighten down the bottom bolt. While I'm tightening down these bolts, I'm holding on to the brake. Over here. We're going to pull out our cycle pal. Make sure when doing this test as well, my gloves are clean. You don't want to touch your rotors with anything, like grease or anything like that. Let's give it a nice test. Hmm. It's still making noise. The hell, cycle pal? Cycle. All right, they made me do it. So I removed the wheel from here. I have here our Park Tool disc brake pad spreader opener. PP-1.2. What we're going to do is we're going to take this like this. We're going to put it inside of the disc brake caliper on the pads. And we're just going to spread open the calipers and the pistons. And while doing so, this will be nice. So once we spread this open like this, we're going to extract the tool. Okay. And that way we have a nice even playing field to go from. We're going to put the wheel back in. We're going to loosen up the caliper and we're going to try from the get go. Do not squeeze this brake until we have the tool inside of there. All right. All right, so we got the wheel back in there. I have not squeezed the calipers yet. Let me go ahead and loosen up these bolts real quick. Boom, cycle power. I'm really, I'm trying my best for you because I kind of like this tool. I like the idea of it. It's not bad. If I get into a pinch, I might use it. But doing what it's claiming right now. I did it on the bike before the video. I'm not gonna lie to you. I did it on that bike. Let's go ahead and squeeze the brake. Put it in place. So right now those calipers are freshly pushed in, the pistons are freshly pushed in. I squeeze it with the cycle pal in place so it should give us a little bit more room to work with. Let's go ahead and tighten down. And now cycle pal, cycle pal, cycle pal, cycle pal. Pull out. There we go. No. No. Again, I can pretty much get this thing with my master mechanics right here, watch. Boom, and it should be good now. No, it's not, but it just needs more. So I'm gonna be honest with you. 
this is a cool tool. It is twenty dollars. I don't know if it's worth that. Probably someone can make something different in that time period. Um, if you did, if, if someone does buy, you get a uh, fifteen percent off coupon for it. Um, so you might be able to snag one of these, or you could probably make one yourself. I will probably use one of these in a pinch. It's not a bad tool to keep. I want to say it's probably going to work on, on majority bikes, but in those two instances, it did not. The one got really close to it. This one, this one, I don't know, it did not. So I'd have to finagle around around a little bit with it. Um, but yeah, give me one second. So in conclusion, I will be keeping this tool probably at the shop because like I said, I used it on an S-Works bike with SRAM Red and I did it and it worked the first time. No questions asked. The second time on that Tarmac SL6 I just did, it got it pretty much, it was way better than what it was from stock factory. Um, it got it pretty much to the point where I could just really put my thumb on it right there. Same with the third time with the Roubaix. It got it to the point where I, if I wasn't recording, I could put my face in it and kind of turn it a little bit and it worked good. Do I think it's a buy? For 20 bucks, it's a, it's not that much money. I mean, it's, it's still $20. I'm sure you could probably find one cheaper or maybe on AliExpress or whatever. But it's not a bad tool to have if you work on your own stuff at home and you don't want to make a trip to the bike shop every once in a while. This tool will pretty much get you close enough to a point where you can figure out, hey, I got it pretty much lined up. It just needs a little bit of, just a, a hairpin more this way. Um, again, they did not send this out to me. They did not email me. They did not give me any kind of sponsor for this thing. I bought this just because I'm so sick and tired of seeing on my Instagram feed. So I said, the only way to get rid of it is to, uh, is to buy it. And I bought one. For you guys so that way you guys wouldn't waste your hard-earned money but in conclusion it's not a bad buy anyways guys that's gonna do it for the video thank you guys again so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one